Noise News UK here at the Well in Leeds with the assembled members of Makem. Welcome, gentlemen, to Leeds. And I understand that you released your debut album two or three weeks ago, is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the 30th of November, so it's been about three weeks. Yeah. Which I understand is called Open Your Heart to Caustic Things. That's right. How has the, the feedback been to the record so far in the few weeks it's been out? Uh, really good. Overwhelmingly positive, I'd say. We didn't really know how. Yeah, yeah, pretty overwhelming. We didn't really know how it was going to be received. So you know, really good so far. And uh, I understand that you've had you've had it recorded for quite a long time before you actually were able to to release it. Is it nice to just finally have it out there it in the public domain? Amazing. Yeah. Like we were sitting on it for about six months after we finally like mastered it, but. Um, <coughs> We did it on a total like, budget. It was really DIY, so we were calling in favours. And uh, like our producer, Frankie, he was really good, but he had a full-time job, so he was just mixing and recording on like weekends and on like spare afternoons and stuff. So it took absolutely ages, but I was really happy to find out about And can you actually remember that much about the recording process? <laughs> well, we started it in, was it like, I think it was the 1st of August last year. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a long time coming. But yeah, glad to have it finally out anyway. Uh, for such a DIY record, it doesn't sound that way when you listen to it. It's, it's the produce the thing of it sounds really nice, it sounds really professional, yeah, slick. Really are, you, are you pleased with the job that the producer's done yeah, on it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, we're really happy. We spent a lot of time uh, rehearsing and sort of getting um, up to speed with how we wanted it to sound before we went in. And then when we were in there, we actually spent a lot of time playing with different sounds, so different guitar sounds, different uh, drum sounds, and uh, I think that, that shows like that helps we spent it so long on doing that. And, uh, where did the title of the album come from? Uh, it was a bit of a last minute change actually, it was, it's just one of the lyrics from one of the songs. Um, that was probably the last thing we decided on, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it at length. We were originally going to call the song Start Missing Everybody. The album was going to be called Start Missing Everybody, which is the last line in uh, the book, uh, Catcher in the Right. Um, but in the end, we decided it, we wanted it to be a bit more personal and less about a book that we liked, and more about us and how we felt and what the record meant to us. And uh, the, the line that that song, the song that that line comes from, we ended up calling that song yeah. everybody, so we kept that in. It comes to like the, the title when I first heard it, it sounds kind of slightly negative, but the, the album itself comes across as overwhelmingly upbeat. Yeah, uh, I was you worried when you chose that title that people might have the wrong idea. We talked about that as well, didn't we? With uh, how how because uh, start missing everybody sounds like such an immediate title, uh, but. He, you know, like overall, it just didn't really suit what the album's about. So we thought, even those not <coughs> such like an accessible title to that, to think of straight away. In the end, it suits it much, much better. I'm not so sure that it is a negative. Yeah, I, I was quite wary with all the lyrics of. I don't want to, with a lot of the previous stuff, it has been quite negative. And with these songs, I, even though they're about negative things, I try to. It's more about seeing the positive side of it. Um, so that's kind of how I see it. It's still kind of like a hint of positive thing. It's, like, it's more like a, sort of admitting you've made a mistake rather than like the you know, mistake itself. Um, yeah, that's kind of what it means to me. I think it's just quite an interesting title. That's kind of what we want. It's the eye catch. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, how do you feel you've um, changed the band since between <coughs> bringing out your first EP and then bringing the album out? How do you feel your songwriting's changed? What sounds changed? I think that we've matured a lot in, in both songwriting and outside. I think we've all got sort of different ideals and morals to what we had like four or five years ago and what we want the band to be and what it to mean is is a lot different now, and we're sort of, we always kind of were, but now we're definitely just doing it for ourselves, and if, if anyone else is into it, then that's great, but I think we've got to please ourselves first and foremost, and 
with regards to songwriting, we're all better musicians, we're all better friends, so we understand what everyone's doing and where their strengths lie a little bit more. And uh, I think there's a definite step. We can see a definite step up from the EP to the album, and even now with like we're writing some new ideas and playing with new demos, it's a definite step again in, with regard to that. I'd say we're definitely getting better. <laughs> the fact that you've, the actual album is now out there for people to buy and just do, does that change how you perceive yourself as a band and what you can achieve and what you can do? Do you feel that this album can make kind of kick on and get better to them, get more well known? I think we had pretty low expectations. For us. Uh, not really low expectations, we were just we were just very grounded and I think we Yeah, we weren't we, expecting the world to change because we put out an album, but I think we've got to have an album before we get taken medically seriously, so it's good to have that album. And as we were saying earlier, we are like, overwhelmed with the response because I think because if you go into it with um, I had so low expectations, I feel like we're selling ourselves short, <laughs> but at the same time like when we get positive feedback and we get people talking about it and telling us they like it, it's, it's amazing to hear. Like, we really appreciate it. We weren't really expecting it. So. Do, you, do you find you're able to now play longer sets now that you've got a full length out there and there's more songs that people know? Definitely. We are uh, past few gigs playing, we've only played like the new stuff. And uh, we were a bit wary at first because we didn't want people that came to see us playing, like hearing stuff that they didn't know. But uh, we haven't really hit that problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems to come down really well. It is yeah. tough to be playing the old songs, it seems like a bit of a... We're just so excited to get the new songs heard, yeah. so it feels a bit of a chore to be practicing. Yeah. 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 And now the album is out, we'll be hitting the road hard to get promoted and get people hearing the music. Hopefully, yeah. that's the plan. <laughs> Yeah. That's the plan for next year. Can do. So, will it be sort of self finance solo tours or are you looking to get support from maybe once you have bigger acts tours? Uh, we've been quite lucky with the tours that we've got in the past. Uh, and we're always on the lookout for, like, we'll take any opportunity we can get. And if, if something comes up that's right for us, we'll gladly jump on it. But at the same time, like, uh, like I said, we're very sort of realistic about where we are and what we're doing. And, we know that we are sort of just cramming everything into a car, booking pubs and clubs, doing what we can in the meantime. So we're happy to play anyway. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're here tonight to support Jimmy Holland on his EP Reload show, the very last gig ever here at the Well. Yeah. How are you, what are your thoughts on playing that? How do you feel to be on such a momentous show? Well, we've never, we've never played the world. Yeah, we've never played the world. show at the well. I thought we'd, we'd played the world before, um, but when we got here, I was like, oh, this is new. Yeah, it's, um, it's a really nice venue. <coughs> so really good stuff about it. And, uh, it's a shame that it is closing, but we're, we're honoured to be like a part of the, the final show. And Jimmy's great, and we really appreciate him asking us to come. He's one of our good friends. We're looking forward to hearing his EP. Oh, Enjoy it. And um, just to talk about a little bit of your, your history. How long have you been a band, and how did you form? And, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, we've we'll, we'll been going since about 2006. Um, but the start was very shaky. Yeah. We were sort of learning how to become a band for about four years. And we had loads <laughs> of different uh, lineup changes. And then when Jack came in the band, everything sort of clicked. So we kind of counted from when Jack joined, really, which is about four years ago. Yeah. But we've been playing under the name Mako for since 2006. And, uh, so is it, you just yeah. mostly been playing shows around sort of Wolverhampton, Birmingham area? Uh, we so we did it first. We did that quite a lot because there's quite a lot of the little like, towns and villages around there that we uh, have gigs and we spent the first couple of years just sort of doing that. And then... First, um, first out of town shows, Ipswich, wasn't it? Yeah, we started <laughs> venturing out, branching, branching out. And we, now we try to play Wolverhampton or Birmingham like once every six months or so because you can really tell the difference in like the 
turnouts and stuff. So, uh, yeah, now we sort of just tend to play one-off shows every, everywhere we can, um, just because it, it fits in with like everyone's working, busy with other stuff. But um, we're hoping to be touring a lot more as well. Uh, just to to wrap things up, give you a, a chance to plug the new album again. Uh, what would you say to people watching this to encourage them to check out the new album, Plastic Things? Simon? <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, that's kind of a tough one. I don't really know how to sell what I'm... We always say it's pop punk for grown ups, that's kind of how we interpret it. It's, we don't, we're trying to get away from the pop punk thing a little bit, but that's essentially what it is, but we think it's got a bit more integrity than your, you know, generic three chord boring pop-up and stuff, so. We all have so many like, <coughs> varied interests, yeah. and pop-punk is sort of the point where all our interests meet, so it makes sense that we kind of, our roots are like, deeply embedded in that, but at the same time we sort of, I don't know, just like uh, the way we think about music and the way we feel about music is a little bit more, uh, I want to say, technical, <laughs> but we, we, we sort of put a lot of thought into it. We hope that comes across in what we do. Nice UK, at the world with Logan. Best of luck with the album and getting on to us the rest of the year. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I open my